Good morning, my plant family. <laughs> Hopefully everything is well with you. If you're new to this channel, my nickname is Nina. And if you are not new to this channel, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate every single one of you. This morning, we are going to go into my Alocasia collection. Um, as you well know, if you've seen the previous videos, the heat here has been um, pretty strong. It has been a very long, I think extended heat wave. <laughs> and when the wind comes from the south, yeah, that's what we expect. So we're kind of aware of that. And also the Sahara sands uh, that encapsulate the heat. So my plants haven't been very, very happy, but they're coming back. So yeah, let's go ahead with um, the Alocasia collection. Um, just to remind you, if you like the videos, thumbs up, um, share. If you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so and activate the bell so you uh, can um, receive the notifications when I upload another video. Yeah, but um, the, let me tell you something, the heat has been so, something else. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this video at eight o'clock in the morning. I haven't even eaten breakfast or <laughs> done anything except just collect all these alocasias and hopefully I can have a cooler day or a cooler video. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, my alocasias have suffered a little bit. Um, they have been trans, uh, repotted into pond, most of them. Very few are in aeroid mix or in sphagnum moss. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know I had so many uh, until I collected them all for this video. And I was like, wow, you know what? I've been collecting little by little and I just didn't know I had so many. I mean, I don't think it's that many, but uh, I believe it's under 20. But to me, that's a, quite a collection for one that I didn't obviously collect on purpose, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I did. <laughs> I don't know. But we're going to go ahead with the video. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, we're going to start off with... I think the worst, <laughs> the worst to the best. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's just, uh, when I made the repot into pond, they went dormant and I don't think they like the, the transfer too much, <laughs> the repot. Um, remember I had to take out all the substrate, organic substrate to then put them in pond. And that transition was a little too harsh for them, even though they did receive a little bit of Super Thrive and Micro and tried to help them as much um, as possible to get into these, um, into the pond and to get used to the pond. So yeah, um, we're gonna go into the one that went completely dormant and kind of scared me and I said, uh oh. So this one is, biting back this one's coming back this is the alocasia i know it by piculini uh, but it is the bambino one of the corms that it had it came back and i'm super happy there we go and this is the alocasia bambino coming back i'm super 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 happy <laughs> Okay, this next plant um, is not doing too well. Um, I don't know whether it just doesn't like pond, uh, whether it didn't like the, the transition into pond. Uh, maybe it's receiving too much water. I know it's receiving uh, illumination because it is on the south facing window. Um, I don't have it under grow lights, but the light there is natural and it's growing, it's got good illumination. So I'm hoping that I can grow this one better. This one didn't like the transition very well. So if you can help me with this one, this is the Jacqueline. Look at it. <laughs> it's like, oh my, the Jacqueline. It's so, it's so pretty. I have it as a Sulawesi Jacqueline, but um, yeah. Maybe it's just the region that it came from. 
I did get it small and it does need a lot of tender loving care when they are so young. I didn't find any corms in this one when I did the transition. So I'm hoping that with a little bit more tender loving care, it'll grow better. If you have any suggestions as to how I can grow this better, I'd really appreciate it if you can put it down in the comments. But yeah, this is my Jacqueline. Ooh, I want it better. Okay, we're, grown, we're going from worse to better. <laughs> they do get better. <laughs> um, this is This one is my Alocasia Green Dragon Scale. This one had, did die off and now it's coming back. It does have a little bit of yellowing, but uh, it, gets, it has a new leaf right there. And it is kind of cute. I did, um, I did not find any corms on this one when I repotted it, but it is growing and there is a new growth point right there. So, I'm happy it's growing it's getting better and yeah I'm happy for it so um, from what I ha understand these do like the pond they do like having the reservoir of water available to them at all times so yeah I am happy I am happy that it is coming back they do have a dormant uh, period in which they probably don't feel comfortable and they have to um, acclimatize and uh, yeah and then once they do that they if they want to come back they come back <laughs> and this one is coming back so I'm happy okay these uh, corms look a little bit more like the green dragon scale than they do from what I had put down there I put it in smag sphagnum moss with perlite and uh, yeah, just added a little bit of water but the roots are doing very nicely right there it's growing very nice I do have it in my IKEA mills bottle getting the humidity so I am very happy with these corms and what I'm gonna be doing is transferring them into pond soon um, so yeah, I have them labeled as something else, but they don't look like the one that I, I labeled, so I'm not sure what happened there. The next one is the Mellow. This one is a mate, uh, a matte. Um, it is not a shiny leaf. It is a very hard leaf, I'd say. A very, uh, it's not very thick, but it is nice. This one died off, and it came back, and I do have it in Lekka semi-hydroponics and I decided to test these allocations and see what they preferred whether they liked it in pond or leka better and this one came back very nice so we'll see we'll see how that progresses but yeah it does like the leka and it looks a little pregnant to me so hopefully that new leaf will be coming in soon Okay, and the next one is, okay, let's go with this one. This one is the Asclanii. I have it in this setup here, in pond, with the glass and the water. Um, <laughs> you won't believe what happened with this one. Um, it had three big leaves. I had it in the Ikea Millsbow Tall, getting good humidity. And I said, oh, let me see if I can take it out and if it likes the, the regular ambient atmosphere environment. And it did not like it. It just died off. And I was like, oh, oh, let me put it back. So I put it back in the cabinet, receiving good humidity, and here it is. So we have this one that just came out recently. And this one was a corm that I had uh, taken out and I put back, and it's growing. 
so yeah this one is very pretty uh, when it gets good illumination it, it comes out more like a burgundy um, stressing and it looks very very pretty but here it, it is getting light it's just probably not getting enough so I have to get it closer to the light but yeah it is growing Okay, the next one is another one that I got at Hort from the Flower Festival. And this one, um, yeah, it died back and now it's growing again. So I'm super, super happy. This is the Alocasia heterophylla. So we can see this is the older leaf. I believe this is one of the original ones. I don't think it's a new one. This one is a new one. Look how beautiful. This one gives out a more platinum color. It's so pretty. Very, very pretty. And I'm starting to think that the one that I have for this one could be the corms that I have. What do you think? It does look shinier. And it does look a lot like the heterophylla. My corms got mixed up when I did the repot and even though I have a name, I don't I don't think it's the, the mellow. It looks more like the heterophylla. But you'll never know until it starts growing and it starts having that defined shape. But yeah, this is the heterophylla. Very, very pretty. I really, I really do like this one. And I do have the fan on the top, so that's why it's moving so much. There we go. I'm gonna have to put a little stake on it to keep it in place. The next one I have is, they do get better, I promise. <laughs> Okay, this is the poly. I don't know if you remember that, the grow light burning, this one. This is an older leaf. This one's a newer leaf. This plant, all the forms that came out of this one, was a big plant that I had downstairs receiving the northeast illumination. And I had it in a pot in soil. And it grew really, really big, really big. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't think I ever took a picture of it. The thing is that um, it died off when it started getting colder, was it? When it started getting colder because it can go down to 60 degrees here at night or even 40, you know, it, um, it all depends but it just died off and then I took out the corms and this is what came out of it. So it's growing, it's growing. And uh, I'm super happy. Now this one, I had never had spider mites before that I am aware of. And when I took this one out to clean it, it had a webbing right between here. And it was like, oh my goodness, I've never had spider mites before and now I have spider mites. And um, yeah, I did have a couple spiders, but they have this web that's big. I do not mind it because they eat the gnats. I'm getting rid of the pests, so I, I don't mind it. They're not, they're not bad spiders or anything. So when I saw the webbing, I said, oh, I finally have spider mites. So I started uh, pest treating it with neem oil, Castile's diluted solution, and it took care of the situation. So I have not seen any more spider mites on these, on these leaves, and I'm super happy. I did give it like a two week treatment, and it went away, thank goodness. And here I can see a new growth leaf coming out so I'm super super happy there you go you can see it and yeah this one is receiving illumination uh, from the southwest 
window and it, it's growing nicely, which I'm super, super happy. And I'm starting to think that what the forms that I have are the poly. If you think differently, let me know. But this one is in flugel stratum. You can see the, the roots. And just as long, it dries out very fast, but uh, just try to keep moist on a regular basis. But yeah, this one does look like a poly. <laughs> I think it's a poly, yeah, I think it's a poly. So yeah, I'm super happy with this one. Yeah, I'm glad I got rid of those spider mites. Woohoo, that was fun. <laughs> next one they're getting better <laughs> they are getting better which I which is what I like um, the next one I got at the uh, flower festival several years ago it died off and it's coming back this one is the silver dragon alocasia they call these are uh, jewel dragons I mean jewel alocasias when they're small there, there can be alocasias that are very big and this one is growing bigger, which is a very good sign. I do have new growth here. And this one is also in pond with a mixture of mecca also. So yeah, when I see progress, it's like, okay, I'm doing something right. It's getting there. So little by little, we are learning. Uh, and if you have better tips as to what I can do to get these bigger, I do fertilize. I've been fertilizing with several actually because I ran out of um, fo foliage focus and I've been putting other um, fertilizers. I've been putting the Myco, I've been putting the uh, 2020 20, I've been putting um, Super Thrive. And um, yeah, and then I finally got the foolish focus again. So I'm not sure which one it is that they, they like. So yeah, so much for that one. Okay, the next one, this one died off also. And it is growing back. This is the Cupria. Here I had a little accident and with the stake it made a hole but it is growing and it's starting to get like that that uh, pinkish um, stressing. So yeah, it is growing and it just grew a new leaf. It's very, very soft. It still needs a little bit of hardening. It's growing very nicely. It's got that reddish backside. I think it's so pretty. This one is so pretty and I'm super happy that they're all making a comeback. So, yeah. Super happy. The next one is doing nicely, but let me tell you, <laughs> some of these are pest magnets. That's the only thing that I don't like about this genus. Um, Alocasias attract pests rather easily, so you have to be on top of them constantly and uh, you know treat them. In this case, I have treated this one with neem oil and castile soap and alcohol because it does like the mealybugs love this plant. It's, it's, a, it's a plant. It's a mealybug magnet. This one is the Alocasia cuculata. And it's, it's plain, it's a plain green one. Uh, but, you know, the leaves are kind of cute. You know, they're wrinkly, they look more like uh, uh, some type of like anthuriums. But I'm not sure how I feel about this plant. Being such a mealy bug magnet, uh, I've been treating and treating it, and it is growing very nicely. Um, but, yeah, I just have to be on top of it. I don't know if you've had the same situation, if you do have this plant. Um, but yeah, I do have it in substrate. Um, 
this looks more like a uh, aeroid, one of my aeroid mixes from the beginning uh, in which the pieces, the bark pieces were smaller. But yeah, uh, it's growing nicely, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about this plant. Uh, we'll see, we'll see if I change my mind and, and things look better for it. <laughs> but yeah, Cucolata. Okay, I've got three more to go. Uh, let me show you one that loves being outside in the sun, the Rex sun. This is the Mickey Mouse. I love this plant. Um, I did give some corms to, actually some um, pups, to my daughter. And um, she has it outside in, I think it gets sun, direct sun of south, southwest, and she has it huge. These leaves are huge, and I said, wow, they don't get that big with me, but I do have these in a pot. I have these in aeroid mix, and getting rain from outside, and they do look so cute. They do make a little cup at the tip, and this one, this one's a small one, but the variegation is just so cute. I've seen them um, actually, not as nice as these. I've seen them wrinkly. I've seen the variegation um, grow mid kind of abnormally. But the, I, I guess that's just part of the, the, the species uh, in this case. I don't know. Um, but this one is so cute. I got this one. Where did I get this one? No, I don't remember where I got this one. I think this was in Byron Pike. And they, they can, the big ones can run kind of costly. Um, I don't think I got this one as a big plant. But I think it was in Byron Pike. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is growing very nicely outside in the balcony. And it's kind of cute. I really do like it. Okay, this other one, uh, we only have two. Cleaning, you know, this one and another one. Um, this one is very pretty. Um, I bought this at the flower festival in Ibonito here in Puerto Rico, and uh, it has been going very nicely. I still have one of the older leaves, and this is the Hoya. Um, here I go again, the Hoya. This is the Alocasia <laughs> scalprum. This is one of the older leaves that still has some of the residue. I tried taking it off, but it doesn't come off. And uh, yeah, it's been growing very nicely. This is an, uh, the next oldest leaf, that uh, Venetian. This one is a newer one. Very nice. Got these little horns, I, I call them. <laughs> Look how beautiful it is. And then I do have a new leaf. This one, this one of the horns got stuck. I don't know why it got stuck. I un, unpeeled it here, but it must have been one of the transitions in fertilizers. But it is a new leaf. Yeah, that, that means that there is progress. Very nice, very nice scalp room. And I do see some new growth coming up here. So that's a good sign. Okay, these are the corms that I put in, sphagnum moss and perlite. These are the scalp rooms. It took approximately, I'd say like uh, maybe a month two months maybe to grow. It wasn't that much. But as you can see, it's rooted. And I am recycling these cups. <laughs> but yeah, it's growing very nicely. So I'm gonna be transferring them over to the main plant eventually. And uh, yeah, doing well. So I'm starting to do things correctly. 
I don't want you going through what I went through, but it's growing very nicely. So I'm super, super happy. So let's get into the last one that I have. And this one is a big mama. This big mama has been growing very, very nicely. Um, I did have some corn from separated it and uh, they, I forgot to, for some reason that, um, let me show you, let me show you. This big mama is the Regal Shield. Can you see me in there? Yeah, you can see me in there, I think. This one is a fast grower. I transferred it into pond, and it just shut up. I mean, it just it grew super, super fast. And I put it in pond, and put it in this vase that I had available at the time. Because it was such a big pan, I put some Lecca Reservoir and it's been going super, super nice. I don't know if you can see all uh, the growth. Can you see it? It's kind of hard to see all the roots, but yeah, it is growing super, super nice. It's a fast grower when you give it what it needs. It has not given me any pass which is super super good um i did take out some corms and they grew they just grew so well in the um, flugel stratum let me turn it this way so you can see it better but i as you can see it's been growing very nicely um they are in the southwest facing window like come on really and this surprised me because I went outside to water my plants and then I saw this and I said oh it probably got combined with some of the soil that I had thrown in back and it just the corn just took off and after that it's like you know what you are a good baby you are a good plant so I decided to bring it inside and here it is and it just gives out quorums very, very much. So yeah, I'm super happy with this one. Very, very nice. So I, can, I am going to continue to take care of my allocations, get some ones that I have on the wish list. Um, and um, yeah, I do like this genus. I just have to be on top of it, make sure that the, the, the pests are controlled and that they don't get any make some more uh, preventive maintenance and uh, yeah but other than that i really do like it um i do have some that are on the wish list which i i eventually want to get uh preferably go into the pink ones eventually when i have uh, taken care of these well enough that i feel more comfortable and uh, yeah yeah but they are a very very nice genus very nice genus and uh, they, they bring me a lot of joy especially when I find corms and um, you know it's like oh they have corms you know sometimes I peel it back sometimes I don't depending on the corms some don't need to be peeled back um, but other than that they grow very very nicely so yeah I want to eventually do another or get another cabinet just for allocations they do need humidity, they do need constant light, make sure that the water is always there for them. They do grow very well in semi-hydroponics. Um, yeah, just make sure that you have that water reserve when they need it. <laughs> but other than that, they are growing very nicely and uh, getting better. So that is progress, that is good. That means I'm doing something right. <laughs> Hopefully you liked the video. Uh, if you did, thumbs up, like, uh, share, so we can learn more about how to take care of our alocasias. And uh, yeah, just re uh, to remind you, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe, activate the bell, so you can receive um, notifications when I op upload another video. And um, yeah, I just want to remind you that I do have a Spanish-speaking channel, 
Nina Suculenta Simas. If you if it's easier or if it's better for you to understand, go ahead with that. So, uh, yeah, from Puerto Rico, the customary blessings, which is you, your family, your pets, and your plants. Have a wonderful day, and see you for the next video. Bye.